Greetings and namaskar to each one who came here to watch this video. In this video, we will study the conditions that are applied on the boundary due to electric field. Let's take a quick outlook to understand this concept easily. So, suppose this is a point charge Q, which is producing electric field. And now let's place a charged surface in between it, like this which is having sigma surface charge density and obviously this will also produce electric field like this. So we can see that left hand side electric field are decreasing and on right hand side they are increasing. So there is certain amount of discontinuity that we will observe here. So in this video we are going to calculate the discontinuity due to the electric field. Well. In this video, we are going to cover three subtopics under boundary condition and that are boundary condition on normal component of electric field, boundary condition on tangential component of electric field and boundary condition on potential. Now, firstly starting with boundary condition definition. The condition that electric field must satisfy at the interface separating the two media is called boundary condition of electric field or simply the conditions that must be satisfied by the fields or potential at interface are known as boundary conditions. So number one, the boundary condition on normal component of electric field. Let's understand the diagram first. Here this is a cylindrical Gaussian pillbox which is intersecting this interface such that its half part is below the interface and its half part is above the interface. And this interface has sigma surface charge density. And this sigma is varying point to point on this surface. And B is the height of the cylinder. This is area A. And we have unit vectors here that are N1 and N2. This is X and Y axis. And we have electric field component as E1x and E1y and E2x and E2y. So this is the diagram showing the normal component of electric field. And we are going to calculate the conditions which are applied due to this boundary. Now to calculate boundary condition we will use Gauss law. And we know that sigma is varying from point to point. That's why we will consider extremely small area A so that sigma remains constant on that area. So now by applying Gauss law to the pillbox we will get closed integration E dot ds is equals to Q enclosed upon epsilon naught which gives sigma A upon epsilon naught. So now we can write this E dot ds as E1 dot A1 plus E2 dot A2 is equals to sigma A upon epsilon naught. And Using unit factors here, we can rewrite it as E1 N1 cap A plus E2 N2 cap A is equals to sigma A upon epsilon naught. Now, here we will consider only the Y components. Why? Because X component of electric field does not contribute to the flux as it is parallel to the flat surface. So, we will consider only the Y components and as the unit factors are in opposite direction so let's take only one of them with the negative sign. So we get minus E1Y A plus E2Y A is equals to sigma A upon epsilon naught. Taking A out as common and cancelling with this A we will get E2Y minus E1Y is equals to sigma upon epsilon naught. Now changing this Y component into normal component. We can finally write it as E2n minus E1n is equal to sigma upon epsilon naught. Here, this E2n is the component of electric field which is normal to the surface and just above it. Similarly, this E1 is the component of electric field which is normal to the surface and which is just below the surface. Thus, there is a discontinuity of sigma upon epsilon naught in the normal component of electric field at the boundary. So this condition goes for the normal component. Now coming to the next, we have 
the boundary conditions on tangential component of electric field. We know that electrostatic field E is a conservative field. Therefore, circulation close integration E dot dr for any closed path is zero. We use this property for determination of boundary conditions on tangential components of electrostatic field. Let us imagine a rectangular path ABCD as shown in the diagram. Segment BC and DA are made extremely small and their contribution to the line integral is negligible. So here also in this diagram we have two regions, region 1 and region 2 and interface and the electric field components like E2Y, E2X, E1Y and E1X. Now using close integration E dot DL which is equals to 0. So we can write it as E2 dot AB plus E1 dot CD is equals to 0. Here AB and CD is equals to L which is length. In this case we are taking the X components. So we will write E2X on place of E2 and L on place of AB plus minus even X. Why so? Why minus here? Because it is opposite to the direction of E2X and L on the place of CD which is equals to 0. We will get E2X is equals to even X and now replacing this X component with the tangential component we can finally rewrite it as E2T is equals to E1T. Here E1T is the tangential component of the electric field just below the interface and E2T is the tangential component of the electric field just above the interface. Thus, the tangential component of electric field is always continuous across the interface. Now, we can combine the boundary conditions into single expressions. From the result from the first part, that is E2n minus E1n is equals to sigma upon epsilon naught. Rewriting it along the unit vectors, we can write it as E2n j cap minus E1n j cap is equals to sigma upon epsilon epsilon naught j cap. We use j cap here because they were the components of the y axis. So we had used j cap and now from part second we get the result e2t minus e1t is equals to 0 and as it was the component of x axis so we will use i cap here. So rewriting it we will get e2t i cap minus e1t i cap is equals to 0. Now adding these two equations we will finally get E2 minus E1 is equals to sigma upon epsilon naught J cap. Here E2 is the electric field above the interface and E1 is the electric field below the interface. And here the N cap is the unit factor normal to the surface and it is directed from below to above. Therefore, by knowing the field on one side of the interface, we can find the field of the other side of the interface. Now, moving to its third part, that is boundary condition on potential. So, let's consider a segment AB of infinitesimal small length across the interface like this. V above is the potential above the interface and V below is the potential below the interface. Now, the potential difference would be written as V above minus V below is equals to minus integration from B to A E dot dr. This came from the equation E equals to minus del V. Now, as the path length AB tends to zero, its contribution to the line integration can be neglected. So, we can write it as V above minus V below gives zero. It means V above is equals to V below. Therefore, electrostatic potential is continuous across the interface. Hence, there is no discontinuity in potential in crossing the boundary conditions. So overall, we get to know that boundary condition on the normal component gives discontinuity of sigma upon epsilon naught. And boundary condition on the tangential component is always continuous across the interface. Similarly, the boundary condition on the potential is also continuous across the interface.
So that's it in today's video. Hope you found this video productive. Thanks for giving your time here. Take care.